Insightful Podcasts by Informative Hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 13, Pets. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, along with my lovely and talented co-host, Madison Whalen. Hello, everyone. Hello, Madison. How are you doing today? I'm doing quite well. Good, good. Today, we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to talk about pets that play such a vital role in our lives, and, uh... Kind of have an easy day today. Yep. So a couple of things we're going to talk about. We are going to look at why do people keep pets. Uh, then we'll look at what are the benefits of, t- of pets to teens. Uh, then we'll look at some of the health benefits that pets afford us. Uh, then there's some interesting statistics on pets that we'll talk about. And finally, we'll talk about... Uh, your pets, and the impact that they have on your life. And then we'll close up with your closing remarks and shout-outs. So, are you ready? Yep. So the first thing we're going to start off with is why do people keep pets? So in doing research for this uh, week's podcast... Uh, I checked out a site called PetsKeepersGuide.com, and they had a very uh, simple reason for it. They say uh, pets, uh, people have pets for various reasons. Some people keep pets because of their physical attractiveness, some for their playfulness and other unique personalities and characteristics, while others keep pets for companionship. So we have pets. Yep. How many pets do we have? Three. And what do we have? We have three cats. And why do we have pets? Well, mainly because Mommy and I both love cats. I don't really know if you play a big part in it, seeing as you're allergic to cats. Well, uh, I don't play a big part in it, but, you know, one of those cats kind of did adopt me. Yep. Okay, so that's a pretty good reason. Now, we have them... Because we love them, we have them, what, for companionship? Well, yes. Did you know that there are other benefits that you get from pets other than just keeping your company? Nope, I did not. Well, we're going to have to talk about those. So this is Insights in a Teen. So the first thing we're going to look at is what benefits teens tend to get from pets. So uh, this information actually came from Oprah.com, a site hosted uh, on behalf of Oprah Winfrey. Um, and it's, it's a bolded list of features or, or, I guess, benefits that teens get from pets. And I want to run down these and see if any of these apply to you or if you think they apply to you. Okay. Okay. So the first one that we have is... Uh, Children who grow up in homes with pets have less risk of developing common allergies and asthma. Are you aware of that? No, I have not learned that that is actually possible. I think part of that is because your body starts developing immunities to these things and it builds its defenses. Kind of like when kids go to to preschool and they're exposed to germs and their bodies build up an immunity to it. Ah, um, I can speak firsthand from this because I was extremely allergic to cats um, prior to mommy and I meeting each other. And exposure over a decade to cats has made me 
less allergic to them. Uh, I'm not immune to them, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, the next thing they have is playing with dogs may help lower blood pressure. And I think this is probably more to do with the exercise that you get from dogs. Yeah, true point. Um, you don't get a lot of exercise from cats, do you? Nope. Um, aside from, you know, cleaning up after them, maybe? Maybe. So what do you do with a cat that would constitute exercise? Um, I don't know, maybe chasing after them if they try to run out of the house. Does that happen a lot with your cats? No, we never really let them out anymore. I did always have to keep an eye on Dorian, our, our oldest cat, when we um, had to get her back in because she was trying to cross the street and I had to always keep her back in. Yeah, well, she did like her freedom, that's for sure. Yep. So the next thing that they had on the list here was Kids with pets go outside more to go for walks, run and play, and enjoy all the associated health benefits. Somehow I don't think this one applies to you. Yeah, it doesn't. Well, before when Dorian was allowed outside and she was like almost a strange, she would always hang out by us. I would go outside occasionally and have a little fun with her. I'd pet her. We'd go on the grass together. We'd have just fun. Yeah, well, and I know when we would go out to walk and stuff, we'd walk around the, the neighborhood, she'd follow us around, too. Um, but we weren't getting exercise because of her. She was getting exercise because of us, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pet owners require fewer doctor's visits. Now, the study didn't really explain why. Um, I don't know if it's because of the exercise associated with it or not. Um, and I don't, I don't really have a comparison because, you know, I've had, we've had pets here for quite some time now. Um, do you know of any kids now that have pets that go to the doctors less? No, I don't. Okay. Well, I know there are therapy animals and stuff like that, that, um, you know, have a medical purpose to people. Yeah. So, um, emerging, oh, that's interesting. I didn't even read this one yet. Emerging readers, kids just starting to learn how to read, often feel more comfortable reading aloud to a pet. Like, like, do you enjoy, when you read, do you, you don't read out loud, right? Well, sometimes if I need help focusing, yes. But okay. I'm pretty sure when I was younger, I would normally read to my cat. To our cat, Fluffer, who sadly passed away. Right, yeah. So you're more inclined because they don't judge you, right? Yep. They don't judge you. They don't comment. They don't make fun of you. Unless they, they meow. Right. But basically, they love you no matter what. And yep. it's a confidence builder. So nurturing a pet is an acceptable way for boys to parent play, to practice being caregivers. Now, obviously... This does not apply to me. This does not apply to you. Um, but it basically allows boys to do the same thing that girls tend to do when they play with dolls and stuff like that. Uh, what else do we have here? Feeding and caring for a pet encourages childhood responsibility. Now, is that something that you agree with? Yeah, I would say so, because you're basically taking care of another life, and if you, like, feed it, take care of it, it, it shows that you have responsibility and that you can take take care of a pet. Bas and pretty much when a parent gets a pet, it's basically because the, ki the kid is being responsible, and the whole reason for, and the whole reason for getting the pet is because the kid wants it and they're responsible enough to have one. Well, and you're right, it's very important because at that point in time, that animal's life is dependent on, entirely on the caregiver that's that's owning it at that point. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that, um, you know, you have the responsibility to feed it and look after it and make sure it's cleaned up for and everything else. Yep. Um, an interesting side note, a lot of uh, young adults, when they get into relationships, you know, prior to getting married and having kids, one of the first steps that they go through oftentimes is acquiring a pet. 
And the idea is if the two of them can raise a pet together in a happy household and share responsibilities, it's a good step towards having children, getting a place of their own and stuff like that. So it's an interesting stepping stone. Children with pets display improved impulse control, social skills, and self-esteem. Do you think that's that helps you with your cats? Like, um, to be better able to talk to people? Sure, that's part of the social skills. Well, I do, kn- I do remember some moments where I would talk to my cats, and um, whenever I try to like calm other people down I might or well I guess that would help okay yeah I mean it, it it basically allows you to practice social skills again in a judgment free environment where the animal is not going to judge you mm-hmm. sharing the love and care of a family pet forges an additional common bond among siblings uh, now unfortunately while you do have a brother he doesn't live with us so this isn't something that you would probably be exposed to all that much yep um this is one that i can speak from experience on because as a child we had a family dog and the family dog was supposed to be my brother's dog Um, but we were all responsible for making sure he was fed and had water and was cleaned and brushed and all that stuff and um You know, having that common goal, that common purpose, uh, allowed me to interact with my brothers in a way that I normally wouldn't have have interacted. Mm. Cuddling a pet reduces stress, loneliness, and anxiety. How do you think about, what do you think about that? Well, I definitely think that is true because sometimes when I, like, like, have a cat laying on me and I start petting it, I um, calm down if I feel stressed or in, or anxiety, and I'd actually feel as though I wasn't lonely. Yeah, and I have to tell you, it's it's funny, you know, cats really can sense when you're feeling sad or lonely or or in the dumps or yeah. or even if you're not feeling good. I mean, the cats the cats migrate even even um, our one cat Leota, who's n- not a particularly social cat. You know, if I'm homesick from work and I'm downstairs on the couch not feeling well, she'll come downstairs and sit with me just to provide some level of support. It's it's quite amazing. Yeah, and after our cat Fluffer died, who used to always sleep in my room with me, and I was kind of and I was crying a lot. Dorian, our cat Dorian, would come in my room, and then she started sleeping with me at night, and I felt comfortable. Yes, Dorian has a a very motherly instinct to her, I think, just like Fluffer did. Mm -hmm. So, very cool stuff. Yep. So next, let's talk about some of the health benefits that uh, pets provide us. So this information comes from indiatimes.com. They say in a recent study... A recent study showed that there are more pets than children in American households, which I thought was rather interesting. Uh, Keeping pets at home has several benefits, and these include uh, pets can enhance your mood. They say research, research has shown that people who suffer from various diseases have lesser chances of depression if they keep pets as compared to those who are suffering with similar diseases and don't keep pets. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I definitely think that could be true because whenever um, I'm at home sick and I'm not feeling too well, the the cats would come, like a cat would come, and they would comfort me and I'd feel better. And I'm pretty sure you can relate too when you said um, with Leota that she comes down when you're sick. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, they're very good nursemaids. Yep. Uh, They help to control blood pressure. Health experts say that dog owners have less blood pressure and heart rates. Now, they only mention that about dog owners. I don't know about cat owners. Uh, I know our cats have a tendency of raising my blood pressure. Yeah. You know, because of the mess that they tend to make and the, the, 
itchy eyes that I get from them. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think, do you think the calming effect that they give you helps, might help blood pressure? Maybe. Okay, I would, I would go with that as well. They are a source of exercise, except our cats, I think. Um, our cats don't really get much exercise. Yeah. Uh, for them, a full day is waking up upstairs in the bedroom and walking downstairs and going back to sleep in the living room. And, and then repeating the whole thing, yeah. occasionally they're, getting a drink of water and eating. Yeah, they're, they're pretty much spent after that. So yeah. I, I think that's probably more targeted towards dog owners than cat yeah. owners. Um, the next point here is that they are an antidote for loneliness. Pets give you unconditional love and are always faithful. Again, this is one of those, they don't judge you. They don't complain. They don't, you know, argue with you. Although I'm pretty sure sometimes the angry meow we get from Dorian is, is kind of an argument on a certain level. Yeah. Um, but are they an antidote for loneliness, do you think? Yep. I can definitely say with confidence that they are definitely an antidote for loneliness. Are they? Is comfort from the cats one of the things you search for when you're feeling lonely? Yeah, sometimes. Or is, is it one of those things where the cats know that you're lonely or upset and they just, you know, seek you out? Well, both and both. Okay. Sometimes if I'm feeling lonely I don't, and I don't feel like looking for the cats, one of them will come in and comfort me. If I want to go look for a cat, I do, and I just sit down and pet them. Gotcha. So, yeah. And they, and they let you do that at that point. Yep. Yeah. Long life. Several studies have revealed that people who tend to spend their time with pets are more likely to live longer than people who don't. Um, I th would definitely agree with this. I mean, you see, um, a lot of elderly people who have pets tend to be far less lonely, far more active and social, uh, and they tend to live longer lives. So cats can make you live longer. How's that sound? Yeah, that definitely sounds as though it could be true. Better social skills. So kids who grow up with pets at home are always respectful towards living things. And that's, you know, that's that's an interesting take that they put on it there with social skills and respect for living things. Um, and I think a lot of that goes back to the responsibility. When you learn, you know, how important it is for you to take care of that animal, you know, it's a real uplifting experience, I think, and then it makes you respect other things, not just pets, but people and plants and the earth and, and everything that's alive. What do you think? Yeah, I can definitely see how that could work because, like, um, if you don't want... Because if, if you yell at your cat, they're probably going to get upset, and you then realize that if you do that to other people, you're... It's not any better. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 a life. It's a good life lesson on how to how to handle other people too. And the last one they had on this uh, health benefit list was safety. Uh, no burglar alarm can be better than a dog. <laughs> uh, okay, that's debatable. Yeah. Um, do you get a sense of safety from having cats in the house? Sometimes, if I have like. If I'm distracted or worried, when they come over, I feel like it's safe and calm and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, dogs, when dogs hear something, they bark. Do you get any kind of early warning system with cats like that? Um, Unless you count the times that you've been woken up by cats scratching you on top of you, meowing, yodeling. That's usually because they're hungry, though. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so maybe not too much safety coming out of cats then. Yeah. All right, fair enough. So as with all things with our podcasts, we have statistics. Well, most things. Yeah, we try to do statistics because it helps to put things into perspective, I think. Yep. So we have a couple of different sites that we pulled from this week. Uh, one site was 
iii.org, which I'm not really sure what that stands for. I have the site here, but oh, the Insurance Information Institute, which oh. was an interesting source, I thought, for getting information on pets. But they did have two things that stood out to me. Okay. So they say that about 68% of households or 85 million families own a pet in 2018. That's a lot of pets in a lot of houses. Yep. Uh, they say this is up from 56%. So we went from 56 to 68%. Oh, wow. Since 1988. Wow. So there's definitely a growing trend in people owning pets. And I guess... It kind of makes sense coming from an insurance institute um, because in a lot of ways, pets are an insurance concern. You hear about uh, dogs biting people and stuff like that. Well, usually when that happens at someone's house and you know somebody sues or there's medical uh, bills or anything like that, it's the insurance companies that have to deal with it. Mm. Uh, when we were living in an apartment, we had to pay a premium to have pets in the apartment because of the damage that they knew the cats were going to do to the walls and the carpet and stuff like that. So aside from the, the general care costs of animals, there's that, you know, damage and, and potential harm that we have to worry about. But 85 million families have pets. That's pretty impressive. Yep. So... The next set of st uh, stats that we have here comes from a site that we use often, stageoflife.com. Oh, yeah. Uh, so they say 91% of all teenagers and college students uh, have or do own a pet. You think that's kind of high? Yeah, pretty high. I mean, 91% is a lot. You th what do you think the reasons are for that? Well, maybe... Like we said before, with all of the support, right? Like maybe like to stop them from being lonely because they're probably away from home. I would buy that. Yeah, that's a good one. So, um, and they probably help, and they also probably help them reduce stress, and they can like talk to them if they're feeling sad or lonely. Mm -hmm. So. Um, the next act kind of goes hand in hand with that. 89% of students support animal rights. So, again, it goes back to that, you know, the res learning the responsibility for caring for a pet gives you that sense of responsibility for all other things. Uh, the next one is 67% of teens prefer dogs over cats. Uh, clearly, that is not the case in our household. Yep. Um, why do you think that would be the case? Um, maybe because when you have a dog, it's more playful than a cat, but, and probably people hate cats because they think that they're monsters because they always scratch up the couch and shed all over. And they think, and they might think like dogs are better because you can actually play with them. They actually greet you when you get home. And they're basically just like one of your best friends. I yeah, that you know, I think I would buy part of that. I think I think part of it's also the security. Yeah. Um, and I think part of it is the fact that dogs tend to be far more affectionate than cats do. Yep. Um, I mean, cats are affectionate on their own terms, where dogs are unconditionally affectionate all the time, basically. Yeah. So 38% of teens report it's sad to visit a zoo instead of fun. So let me ask you two questions there. One is, okay. for you, is it sad or fun to visit a zoo? Um, I guess more fun than sad for me. Okay. But I do do feel bad for some of the animals. So then that's the next question. Why do you think these teens feel sad? Maybe because they don't like seeing the animals in prison and they'd prefer them to be out in the wild be where they belong. They probably hate having the animals in prison and they don't like to see them in cage and enslaved. 
Yeah, and and I believe that, and I think the terminology that you you use there might be a little harsh. Um, I mean, a zoo is not a prison. Yeah, they're not enslaving the animals. They're not forcing them to do labor or anything. I know. Um, I think a lot of times, if if many of these animals weren't in a zoo, they would be dead. They would be dead because. I'm, and I think these teens who say that don't might not realize it. Right. But they probably don't like just like having to see um, animals in there. I, I I really can't describe that kind of feeling because I've never felt that kind of feeling. Yeah, and and different zoos are different. Like for instance, uh, the Philadelphia Zoo uh, a few years back wound up getting rid of their elephants because they didn't have the land for the elephants. So the elephants were too cooped up in the small area that they had, so they didn't feel it was right for them to to live under those conditions, so they sent them off to another zoo that had more land. Um, but when we go down to, say, the Cape May Zoo, for instance, you know, the Cape May Zoo has a huge area that, that some of the larger animals can roam and graze and... It's much more conducive to their natural habitat. Um, but, you know, some of these animals get, you know, they all get great medical attention. They're all fed. They don't have to hunt for their own food. Um, it takes them out of their natural habitat, but it also helps to preserve those animals and as I, well. And I think I have another uh, thought on why some teens report it's sad to see them because they're taken out of their natural habitat, and they're shown on dis- and it's like they're shown on display. Even though they're taken care of well, they're shown to the people and to the public, and some teens might not like the fact in that. So yeah, and I and I buy that too. You know, one of the other things that zoos do is they raise awareness. Um, if the only place you can go to see a zoo is a particular species of animals then it really drives home the point that we as human beings have really done a disservice to these animals in the wild. Mm -hmm. So, interesting take. 66% of young people report the death of a pet is the hardest part of owning a pet rather than caring for the pet. Uh, What are your thoughts on the death of a pet? How much of an impact does that have on you? Well, I can definitely say the death of Fluffer did make me very sad for probably a month. I still feel bad about it now. I can remember like a whole day at school where I couldn't stop crying no matter what. But by the end of the day, I just tried to accept it. I stopped crying, but I still feel bad. Yeah, and I'm and I'm with you on that. I mean, when I was a kid, we had uh, this little mongrel of a dog named uh, Rusty. I grew up with the dog. Uh, He was part of the family for sure. Um, You know, it was like having a family member pass away on us when when he died, and it had a significant impact on me afterwards. Uh, In fact, it was, you know, 20-some years before I was able to have another pet again after that because I didn't want to go through that again. Mm. So it does have a significant impact. Yeah. So the next stat we have here is where do families get their pets? Uh, And there's three key places that people get them. And uh, the top one is at 24.8%, they get them from animal shelters. Okay. Uh, 21% get them from pet stores. And 18% are gifts from family members. Now, I just want to say something. I don't think we got any of our cats from any of these places. Um, Except for Leota. No. Wait. Right. Leota Leota came from an animal shelter. Yeah. Uh, Dorothy came from the friend of a friend whose cat had a litter. Yep. And Dorian was a stray. Dorian just sort of showed up on our doorstep and decided that she was part of the family. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So we only got one cat. So one of our cats was from this so of these three locations what do you think would be the best place to get a pet from i think the animal shelters because you're helping animals find a home and 
like some like I know in the past like if an animal wasn't adopted in a week they'd have to put them down right. it's not like that now but I just f feel like they're not as comfortable as being in a in a pet store than in an animal shelter so it would be better to get it from an animal shelter Right. And I agree. And, you know, you're helping the animal shelter out because if you adopt a pet from the animal shelter, then that's an expense that they don't have to continue to incur and they can go and save another animal, rescue another animal. It's, I, I, the way I look at it is every time I, I rescue an animal from an animal shelter, that's another animal off the street that that animal shelter can rescue. Yeah. So, and, and ultimately it all pays itself forward. Yeah. So we've talked about animals, and our discussion has um, circled around primarily cats and dogs. Yeah. And it was raining cats and dogs yesterday, so it's appropriate. Yeah. But uh, they aren't the only pets that people keep. So one of the other things that I thought would be interesting would be... Statistics on the type of pet. Yes, let's look at how what, you know what proportion people keep different pets in. Yep. So the number one pet that people keep are dogs at seventy one percent. That's pretty high. Then you have fish. Uh, are sixty one percent of the people had fish. Yep. Uh, and I, you know, I had fish at one point in time. Fish are fairly straightforward and easy to care for. Yeah, Maddie actually. When I went over to my friend. Ma Maddie's house, she actually had a whole tank full of fish. So. Wow. How big was the tank? Um, I guess uh, this cat times two. That the cat width. times two. Okay. The width and the height would probably be the height, the actually the height of the actual fan over there. Okay, so... About four feet high, probably about six feet long, I'm guessing. Well, not four feet high. Like, you know, the actual fan part. Oh, okay. So about two strip. feet high. Okay. Yeah. So two by two by probably four, I'm guessing, at that point. She even had a, she even had a few tadpoles. Interesting. What kind of fish did she have? Um, I didn't really get too big of a closer look. They were pretty small fish. None of them were huge. Okay. I mean, they had like natural plants and they actually had a bunch of little fish some were slightly bigger than others but yeah interesting i had a friend of mine once who kept piranhas and wow. piranhas are pretty vicious i mean you look yeah. at their teeth they look like a saw blade yeah um, and he used to have to keep a lid on it and when he would feed them he had a special door he would drop the food in because they would leap out aggressively out of the water and could leap out of the uh, the tank. Yep. Um, but, you know, he would drop pieces of meat in there and they would just tear it apart. It was, it was incredible. Yeah. So, but we don't have fish. We have cats. And cats come in in our uh, statistics here third at 42%. Um, so, so, I just want to say something. Even though we have three cats, there's also um, Maddie, again, she said she had two cats. One of them was named Potato. I didn't get to see the other one when I was at her house. But Potato is basically like a male, fatter version of Dorothy. Interesting. What's the other cat named Mashed? I, I don't know. Oh, Daddy! Okay. Or Bakes? Actually, his full name is Irish Potato, but they just call him Potato. Nice. That's an interesting name for an animal. Yeah. So number four on the list here is other, which is rather vague at 24%. Yeah. Uh, I'm guessing they're probably some of the more exotic animals. Yep. Um, like flamingos. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, then we have birds at 22%. And um, um, another thing is that my friend Lindsay, she has a bird. So, yeah, I can relate to that. Well, and my friend Regina has a bird. She, she is... Um, an aficionado of exotic birds. Okay. What kind of bird does Lindsay have? Uh, I don't know, but it's like a smaller bird with a bunch of different type of colors. Parakeet or something? Maybe a parakeet. I don't know. Okay. It's like quite a small bird with a bunch of different colors, mainly blue, yellow, and green. 
And sometimes I would talk, and it would always freak out in the cage whenever we, when we were, when all my friends were over. So. Okay. So twenty-one percent of people have rabbits. Uh, I used to have a friend of mine have rabbits. Rabbits. You would think rabbits are cute and cuddly. They're really not. Yeah. You know, they all, the rabbit always had to stay in its its little habitat yeah. outside. And I and... would always, but I would always be like sad when I would come home. This is when Dor- Dorian was still astray, and she would leave us dead rabbits. Sorry if you, if any rabbit lovers are listening, but <laughs> yeah, Dorian had a tendency of of hunting some of the local rabbits and leaving them on our step and, and as birds. a donation. Yeah, and birds don't and forget birds, the birds and birds as well. Yes. Uh, hamsters come in at 20%. Oh, my friend Maddie has two hamsters as She's well. got a zoo. I know. My goodness, what animal doesn't she have on this list? Well, she doesn't have, she didn't, she said she didn't have a dog. Yeah, I'm sure she'll get one soon, though. Well, Matt, well, Lindsay actually told me that when she's in middle school, her parents are going to get her a dog. Okay, there you go. Um, she has fish, she has, a, she has cats, uh, and she has hamsters. Okay. Well, I guess I can't complain about our three cats then, can I? Nope. (laughs) So 7% of those polled said they never owned a pet. 6% owned a horse. Who do you know that owns a horse? Aunt Sally. That's right. She has quite a few horses. Shout out to Aunt Sally for her horses. Oh, yeah. I'm actually going to have her on the shout out. (laughs) So Aunt Sally, if you're watching this, wait till the end. (laughs) Uh, Then at 5%, uh, we have snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? I also heard some people have tarantulas, which I do not get whatsoever. Some people do. We have a snake, a, a fairly sizable snake, out in our yard somewhere. We've captured some pictures of it. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, it hasn't come in a while, so we... I would not that. classify it as a pet, though. It's a cohabitant of a our co-habitant. yard. A cohabitant. So, so 7% of people didn't have pets. So the one thing that I thought would have been interesting would be to find out why. So, of those that didn't have pets, 34%, the reason was my family was against owning pets. Um, and I guess for various reasons, medical reasons, cost reasons, and so forth. Uh, 30% had allergies, and 21% think pets cost too much. Mm. Um, and, you know, over the lifetime of the pet, they can be expensive, but yeah. so are kids, but we keep kids around, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that was all we had on our statistics. statistics. So let's move on to our next segment. <laughs> so we've talked about them throughout the entire show, but now we will highlight our own pets here. So Madison, tell me how many pets do you currently have? I currently have three pets. And what are they? Cats. They're all cats. One's a black tabby cat. We also She's not tabby. A, a black. She's cat. a black short haired domesticated a black, cat. Black short haired domesticated cat. Right. We also have a gray tabby, right? Is she a tabby or short hair? I think she's a tabby. Okay, a gray tabby named Dorian and the black short haired cat is Dorothy. Dorothy. Yes. Named by you. And then we also have a black calico called Leota. She's black, white, brown, any other color? I thought colors? it was tan. Is it tan? Yeah. No, calicos only have three colors, and she only has three colors of fur. Okay. All right. Well, I guess that works then. What other pets have you had in the past? Well, I used to have two other cats when I was first born called which w- there was a ginger tabby called Nala and a gray calico, gray, white, and probably a little tan calico called Fluffer. We've talked about her before. We have. And uh, Nala was the elder cat when Mommy and I met. Uh, Nala was a um, cat of some size. Yep. She, she was, when Nala sat around the house, she sat around the house. Um, but she passed away before we even moved into the house we're in. Uh, Fluffer came with us to this house. Uh, she was the elder cat when we got the two younger ones, Dorothy yep. and uh, Leota. 
I can definitely say that. Um, then eventually Dorian came by, and those two started, like, talking, like, between the door. We have actual pictures of when Fluffer right. and her were standing by the door together. Right, right. So. Uh, so let me ask you this. Are your pets actually pets, or are they family? I'd say family. And I think that's... That's very true. I mean, like, I'd probably cry when they died, and I definitely see them as more family than pets. Yeah, even even our existing cats now, they are part of the family. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's really one of the key aspects of, of pets in general is how close we get to them. Um, would you want more pets when the ones that you have pass away? Yes. Yes, you would. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, I don't want to replace them. because, Well, I don't consider it replacing them. I mean, I've always thought of having a ginger cat, and since Nala died when I was pretty young and I don't really remember too much of her, for some reason I'm just, I would just always love to have a ginger tabby. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll note that. We'll take that into consideration. Yeah. Um. I, I'm not sure if I'd be I'm, ready to have a cat if, uh, you know, Dorothy passed away. I don't think I'd be ready to have another cat for quite some time. Yeah. Uh, and the irony is, like, she wasn't even supposed to be my cat. I didn't want to get more cats. Um, Mommy wanted to get another cat. And the only terms that I had was that it had to be a black cat, and I had to be able to name it. So we got a black cat, and she was named Dorothy, not D O R T H O R Y. Dorothy as in Dorothy Vader. Yeah. So that was So basically Darth and then a Y. Right. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how things work out. But yeah. uh, we had hoped to have some of our pets join us in here. Unfortunately, they typically are not allowed in the studio. Um, and when we came in to start recording, they ran out and we couldn't get them back in. However, we do have a couple of stand ins. Um, you want to introduce your stand-ins? All right, so the first stand-in I got is Kitty Meow, and we'll probably have a little discussion on her in a little bit, or like in another podcast. Well, we can we can talk about her. I mean, how long have you had that particular stuffed animal? Ever since I was born, and we actually have three versions of her because, like you said before, you were going. You wanted, like, when I s asked if we could, you had three different cats, one in different rooms, and whenever I asked to bring Kitty along on a trip, you guys said Kitty might want to stay behind, and then when I got in the car, it was like magic, like Kitty reappeared, and then um, you would be like, oh, look, Kitty decided to join us, and then she would. Full disclosure, that was mommy magic all the way. She bought three of them at once because she knew that if you lost one you would be completely distraught yep uh, and you've had some significant adventures with kitty um which you know you document in your what do you have a uh Mo mommy's instagram account mommy's got an instagram cat for for the for the kitty who's your other stand in there um she doesn't have a name but i had her for a while and um I've played with her a bunch, and she's, like, the most realistic-looking cat I could find. I haven't gotten to name her yet, but she's definitely been with me for a while now. And um, I just keep, like to keep a lot of cat um, plushies, and when I was going through trying to donate stuff, she's the only she's one of the ones I decided to keep because, well... She's one of the chosen ones. Yep, she's lucky. Okay. All right. Well, I think that largely covers everything we were going to talk about today. I think we'll uh, finish up with your closing remarks and your shout outs. Go for Madison and closing remarks. Okay. So for my closing remarks today, I'm going to say that for people who don't have a pet, I'd recommend getting one even if, if you're allowed to. Or if it was if it's your choice and you would want a and you'd wanted a pet, I'd recommend getting one. Um, it can be whatever pet you want. It you can choose. I really don't know what's the best pet. 
But I do want to say that anyone who does have a pet, I hope you're happy with it, and I hope you treat it like it's family instead of just like another animal, like in the wild. I always treat my cats and pets with care and respect, and I hope all of you do the same, and I hope that, well, your pets are more family than they are pets. Okay. Any shout-outs today? Well, like I said before, Aunt Sally, I just want to give a shout-out to her. Um, she has definitely been a great person to me. I've, I've, been, I've even been able to ride some of her horses whenever I get to hang out with her. She also works with Mommy at her job, so we're pretty close with her. And um, I just want to say that she's definitely a role model for being caring to her pet to her horses and other pets. She actually recently got a new dog, and he's actually really loving new her, and I've definitely heard stories from it, her. Awesome. I also want to give a shout-out to Maddie because she's been able to keep... Maddie, the zookeeper. Yeah, the zookeeper. <laughs> uh, she's been able to rescue a bunch of pets, probably, but yeah. Okay. Cool. I think that's it for this week. Uh, thank you for watching. And Madison, thank you for uh, joining me uh, today. And thank you for having me. And uh, we'll be back next week with uh, another great podcast. See ya.